Hey everyone, so ooh, let me check real quick. Okay, so hello, happy summer, you know, the drill. Okay, today I'm gonna be talking about how I plan my math and how I kind of look at everything that I'm gonna be doing for like the first quarter. So, um, but I'm gonna be mainly focusing on math. So I'll be right back because I have to grab something. So I am moving to fourth grade at a different school and uh, what I, I what I did at my old school was I was able to look at my curriculum and see what I'm going to be doing for in different air in different subject areas for the whole first like nine weeks. I don't know about you, but I like to have a handheld, you know, paper version. Okay, so as you can see, um, I have gone over uh, all of the first nine weeks lessons. This helps me to see something, see the year before I'm actually right in it. This gives me kind of an overview and allows me to plan some engaging activities that I know I can implement and I'm not sitting there at the beginning of the week or on Sunday and I'm going, oh, what can I do to make that extra special or what can I do, you know? So that's why I like to plan this out is so I can see those special moments um, and I can add those into my lessons early on in the school year and I can prepare for those things. For example, let's say I wanted to buy owl pellets for um, a science um, experiment or science investigation. I'm gonna need to order those in advance and knowing where that would fall into my curriculum would be a good thing to know. This is my math curriculum. This year I will be using McGraw-Hill My Math and I've already gone over what we're going to be doing yeah so i'm going to show you how i do this and kind of like the little program that i implemented for myself and how i go over my math lessons okay so let's get into that okay so as you can see here i have my math live and this is me laying in bed one night and just going how can i come up with an acronym to structure my math lessons i love to teach the kids math and i love them to fall in love with math i love them to enjoy doing math so I came up with math live and I just put a little fourth grade tab there. Um, if you do end up wanting this template, I can definitely put it on my TPT for free. It's really no issue for me. So uh, if you do want this, let me know. Math live, this is what it is. Um, the L stands for learn and that is like a 15 minute mini lesson that teaches the whole class. So we'll go over a couple of examples together, things like that. The I is investigate. So for about five minutes, I'm gonna give them a little problem, like a task card or something on the screen that shows like a real way that we can connect this to the real world. Okay, so we're thinking about how we can solve this real world problem using our math, our knowledge of our math skills. V for verbalize, okay? So they're gonna talk about ways to solve that investigation using their math language. Um, during the learn portion, we will have in, introduced some vocabulary, things like that, and we will put those on the board or the kids will have their little flashcards or maybe a cheat sheet. And they're gonna use those math words to talk about how they can solve that investigation problem. Okay, and then I wanna have at the very end an engaging or enriching lesson, something that is uh, going to have them do like a hands-on, work with the skills they now have. So that's gonna be the biggest portion because I think that that is uh, the most important portion is being able to apply your knowledge to something, right? So we have learn, we have investigate, verbalize, and engage. And this is the little template that I've come up with. And as far as planning goes, I just made a blank version and I, um, I like to print them and write on them to be honest, but um, I for this per for sake of this purpose and planning, I'm going to type it today um, and then uh, work from there. So let's escape out of here and let's look at my first math lesson and how I would structure this. So, uh, the way that I use this, I'm just going to show you the already planned version of it. Um, and it just says for the learn portion, um, we're doing place value here. So during that time, I put like what vocab I'm gonna have. I put a little bit like how I'm gonna activate prior knowledge or how I'm gonna introduce them to the topic, get them a little excited and what examples I'm gonna do. So that's all structured by my book. And um, so I just said, put the number 345,789 on the board for 30 seconds and ask the students which number was in the tens place or the ones place or the whatever. And then um, for vocab, we're gonna be learning digit and place value. And we're gonna go over example one and two with the class as a whole group. 
for investigate i really liked number 18 and if a little tip i can give you is to look at the end of your workbooks or um your lessons and usually there's a word problem that's always good for investigation this and pro this um specific investigation asks us to use the place value clues that they give us to find the correct number of miles between the earth and the moon i think that was perfect um they give us six little clues and uh, the students will have to interpret those clues and put them in the correct spots on the place value chart so for verbalize they will do so and they will use um, these phrases. So I put specific phrases. I'm going to have a math talk board and I might use magnetic sentence strips or regular sentence strips or just write on the dry erase board. Uh, sorry, on the whiteboard, um, what phrases and responses you might want them to use while they're conducting math talk. So phrase, uh, phrase one, I think the digit in the blank place is blank. So I think the uh, digit in the tens place is three. Um, the response would be, I agree with so-and-so that the value of the tens place is 30. Uh, honestly, in this, in this per, uh, specific problem, it's 50, but you know, whatever. And then for engage, um, I made some place value games. So I will have them playing those hands-on games. Or, um, I said, for example, these are the games that I would do. Students will play the rivet place value game, which I showed in my last video, but it is in my TPT store. I do have three place value games, um, and they'll name the place of a certain digit and name its value. A similar activity would be to have students pull cards from a deck as a group and then arrange those cards from least to greatest or greatest to least, whatever, and ask them to identify the hundreds place, the tens place, whatever it may be, and then name its value. So that is how I kind of look at my curriculum a little more in depth and this specific lesson has like an engaging component, has a little moment for them to do math talk and a little investigation and um, our whole group learning session. So uh, if you want this template, again, it's going to be available in my TPT for free and you can um, use it <laughs> at your leisure if you would like. So. Um, that's that and I hope this video turns out because guys I've had to film this little part like two or three times and honestly that's probably why I don't sound so enthusiastic so anyways and my dog's working now so gotta go that is my math live that's how I plan to um look over my lessons more in depth before I teach them and kind of just see how I'm going to engage these kids a little bit further. I also just really quickly, um, if you want in Canva, I made these little posters for a growth mindset. Uh, what is it? Growth mindset bulletin board. <laughs> and basically it's just a brain cause I'm going to put train your brain and then it's going to say, I can't do this yet. Mistakes help me improve. I'll keep trying. This may take more effort. Let me try another way. I'm just getting started. So I'll also put these on TPT if you would like. Mine's just a little, look at him. He's so cute. It's a little shiny, but see, uh, so he's like working out. And then on top of that, these are the little, um, the little things I'm just getting started. See, uh, I'll keep trying. Anyways, I just cut them all out and I'm going to put them around him or her, whatever this brain is. And then if you also, I want, I made these chill out cards for my, uh, cool down zone. Okay. So this one just says chill. And again, I don't know if I'm going to hang this to, uh, identify my station or if I'm going to just put them on a little ring and allow them to be like a flip book. So, um, I just kind of put some things that I learned about in this um, book that I got, Anger Management Skills Workbook for Kids. So I kind of took it and I, I put some ideas here. Also, I talked to my mom, she's a therapist, about things I can do with my kids. And uh, she gave me some ideas, so I kind of just put them in these cards. Um, use your finger to trace the swirl. Breathe in when you trace from the tail to the middle. And breathe out when you go back the other ways. Um, trace the eight with your finger, breathe in on one loop and out on the other loop. Okay, so those are just some ideas for my cool down corner. Of course, then I'll have some little manipulatives and things like that back there. I do not want it to become a thing of like, you go back there for fun, but definitely when I see a little bit of stress in the kids or I see, you know, something like that, um, I can definitely help them out by uh, giving them a little time to themselves. 
Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but there's something called Reckless Journal and it's so fun. So, so fun. I did it a couple years ago or maybe like three or four years ago with my fifth graders, fifth grade class. It was something to keep them engaged in their writing and then kind of stimulate them creatively. So um, they each got a blank journal and I would give them these tasks, but it's basically just this, these little task cards that I created and I can again put these on my TPT. Okay, so uh basically they'll go back and they'll take this some are writing some are artsy kind of assignments but the point is is to have an outlet for expression and, but anyways they get one of these task cards it says wreck that wreck that page and it's fill that fill this page with only positive comments so they'll fill the entire page with positive comments this does not need to be just writing out in sentences they can put them in big speech bubbles they can put them in they can draw flowers and in each petal they write a positive comment whatever the heck they want to do it's their own creative way crumple this page without ripping it out and uh, add writing or pictures to it. So it'll make it look kind of old and ruined and they can just do their own thing there. Tie a string to this page and take a walk to the gate. Come back and write about what you saw. So just, you know, random. Tie a string, you wanna ruin the whole thing, right? So you're just walking it along. You're gonna come back with this messy old paper to write on. Love it, it's fun. Kids love this stuff. The, those are a few of the creative tasks creative writing creative tasks that uh i have made on these wreck that page task cards and if you want these again i'll put them in my tpt before i put up this video other thing is that this is how i'm going to be using the stickers in my class so i bought a bunch of erasers bought a bunch of stickers you know i've been seeing them all over instagram i'm like how can i use these in my classroom um so i'm using tap jars and i learned this from somewhere uh, but basically if your line is noisy if your class is noisy whatever it may be anytime or maybe you're just like I just want to give something away so you're like I'm looking for somebody to tap and then you start wandering around and tapping kids on the shoulders and once they know if you're not in the classroom they know when you get to the classroom to go back and to um, grab something from the tap jar which one's going to be filled with erasers and one's going to be filled with stickers in my classroom you could even do it with some fun. Like if you're with little kids, maybe you get like a wand. Ooh, that's kind of fun. You can get like a wand and walk around and be like, I'm looking for somebody to tap. And everybody like loves a fairy, right? So tap, 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 tap jars, super cute. Um, and I got these at the Dollar Tree and the labels I just made on Canva. And so I will have that linked down below if you want to check it out. And thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.